Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Star Sound Speaks. This is your host, Irliana Samsara of Star Sound Astrology. So, this is episode 132, and we are in eclipse season. Tomorrow, in about five hours, we have the exact eclipse, the lunar eclipse in uh, uh, 27 degrees Taurus, conjunct Algol. And uh, as you know, I've talked in the previous episode, I talked about it, but I, and um, how. Princess Diana, who had a very prominent Algol, uh, and as as do um, many many famous people, um, living and deceased. And uh, but I want to talk more about that because I saw the movie over the weekend, uh, Spencer. And if you haven't seen it, it's absolutely fabulous. I can't imagine Kristen Stewart not getting an Oscar nomination. Uh, I think she did a fantastic job, and the vision of the filmmaker was uh, very powerfully realized about her story. And, and uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I feel that for this lunar eclipse, I'm doing a lot of contemplating about it. And I, I really am very captivated by the, um, that aspect of what this lunar eclipse carries because it's so close to Algol. Um, it just passed over, it will have just passed over by one degree, but it, it's, um, it's making a very telling statement. And I think this bears, um, it bears a conversation and a really empowering conversation because as you know, or may not know, uh, Algol has a very, it's considered one of the most demonic, you know, like the demon star and a very negative connotation. And it has been associated with wars and tragedy and things, but it's also about the ability to rise up and to deal with these things and to not brush aside as Diana Rosenberg would say, not, not to brush aside uh, things that we encounter that are, you know, very difficult in uh, witnessing very difficult situations. When you think about Diana, Princess Diana, remember how she did so much good work with the mines going into these places that had uh, people who had been maimed and killed by landmines. So there it was, not willing to look past the horrors of this and really um, making a difference, you know, for others. But anyway, um, so yes, um, and and if you could, we we could reimagine. I really feel with this eclipse too. It's and and um, it is such a juicy time to reimagine our connection with our divine, the divine feminine archetype for all of us, no matter where we are in the gender spectrum. That that aspect of compassion and caring and connection and fairness. And as Venus is now has now entered the shadow period, she's about to go retrograde, only happens every 18 months, big stuff, right? And that the shadow was on Wednesday. So December 19th, uh, Venus will go retrograde conjunct Pluto in Capricorn. So that's a very, very deep fundamental shift. And that's going to be uh, those, those themes of re reinventing and relaying a foundation uh, based on compassion and based on the medicine of the divine feminine and how that can be incorporated and integrated into our society is, is going to be big. But um, anyway, moving back to the Algol conversation. So, you know, yes, it's Venus with the full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus. Obviously, Venus is the hostess of this eclipse, right? Because Venus is the ruling planet for the sign of Taurus. So Venusian themes and energies coming up, changes, major endings and beginnings, changes in fortunes and circumstances. I just got word that Julius Jones, the sentence was commuted. He was supposed to be, um, not the sentence, well, you know, hopefully sentence commuted. The, um, his execution was, um, is, is not gonna happen. Thank God he's been on death row for umpteen years. Um, and so there is this grace, you know, granted, and, uh, and and that's one example. Of course, right now we're in the middle of the Ahmad Arbery trial and Kyle Rittenhouse. They're still debating. You know, the 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 jury is 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 deliberating. Uh, but you see this uh, very very loud, you know, in eclipse season when uh, trials come up, especially in Scorpio, right? Scorpio season. It's very. We're in the final few degrees of Scorpio, so. Um, yeah, a lot of drama, a lot of reinvention here, moving on. So um, with Algo, that feminist idea of the matriarchy having been in the 
in the driver's seat, right? Then losing out to overcome by the patriarchy, the dark side of the patriarchy, and then reclaiming oneself. That seems to be a theme here. And if you think about the Algol, uh, the myth and the, the, the Algol myth and the mythology around it, you know, this is, this is where um, the, uh, it was Medusa, right? It's the myth of Medusa where Medusa was a, a temple, of, she was a beautiful, charming temple goddess and she had gorgeous hair and, um, but, but she was raped by Poseidon in the temple, right? And so then Pallas Athena was so pissed off about this that she, she cursed her because she felt, oh, well, you're defiling you know, look, look at the math here, you know, defiling sacred ground, like being yourself and being beautiful and, and, and just being completely in touch with your sensuality and your goddessness was like defiled. Well, obviously being raped is definitely being defiled. Um, but she um, turned Medusa into this hideous monster with snake hair. And, um, and then Perseus comes along and like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll cut her head off. She's like, yeah, you go Perseus, cut that bitch's head off. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, so he he decapitates her, right? And he holds it. You see this sketch, you know, holding this head with snakes, right? So it was like being decapitated, having being demonized in the worst possible imagery you could imagine. And so now we're turning. Now there's this opportunity, though, to turn this around. And um, when you think about it, too, the um, you know, the word Medusa, the, the word medicine comes from, is the same root as Medusa. And also the, there's a sorceress named Medea. And again, coming from the same root. And when you think about medicine, it's like poison and healing, like the scorpion, you know, the scorpion sting uh, can bite you and poison you, but the medicine becomes the um, well, sorry, the poison becomes the medicine in, in many indigenous, in probably literally all of indigenous tra traditions, this is very understood. So the very, and when we see this in modern psychology, you know, the, the very thing that we um, abhor and are, are felt poisoned by is actually the very agent of change to transform. We go deep into that wound and that healing to heal and come out the other side. So, um, Anyway, I just find it really interesting that, um, you know, where this is our fundamental opportunity to rewrite this and uh, with the flipping the patriarchy back to matriarchy and claiming ourselves. Uh, and look at the, with, with the Spencer movie with, with Princess Diana's life, you know, she was obviously, she had this horrific um, situation and relationship with, with Prince Charles and uh, we all are very familiar with the story and you know how he's he had Camilla all along you know that was she, you know how I say never get married on an eclipse she got married between eclipses what could she not see right what was being eclipsed right in front of her Leo Aquarius eclipse axis the girlfriend on the side right the outsider who was the love affair so um and she of course dealt with this and it was very difficult the bulimia or anorexia or whatever you know she had the eating disorders she has uh she had venus very close to algal so venus food right in her sixth house a lot of struggles around food and health and being healthy and and uh, and, and we see all of that and yet she prevailed um, when you think about Taurus, um, in the movie, they talk about, um, you know, they, they, it was a fictionalized, it was like an imagining of, of what might have been the three days that she went to the, to spend Christmas with her uh, family, the queen and the family, um, before, uh, you know, just for three days. And then those three days is when she decided that she was going to leave Prince Charles and get divorced, right? So that was the, the premise of the story. Um, but the... Um, the archetype of you know Taurus, Taurus ruling the neck, and in the storyline, there's this whole thing about her getting a set of pearls from Prince Charles, which were the same pearls that he gave Camilla. Very interesting, right? Now again, I don't know if that's really true, um, although she did love chokers, right? Venus rules jewelry and fashion. Twenty six Taurus, right? The neck. She loved chokers and um, had a whole collection of pearl, especially pearl chokers. If you can, you could look at photos of her. So there it is, this this Algol connection, and and yet she's very disturbed by it, obviously. And you see her in certain scenes, you know, where she feels like it's like in her imagining in her mind, where she's ripping off from her neck, ripping right. So Algol being um, 
associated with beheadings and heads of state and, and people in high, you know, heads of state kind of places and falls from grace, um, treason, you know, these, these things very, very prominent in Algol, uh, the Algol archetype. Well, here she is, you know, who betrayed her, her own husband, um, and she's ripping these, these neck, this necklace off. So I thought that was pretty amazing. Um, you know, she was, she was scorned, right, by her family, by the royal family. They didn't want to help her out with her mental struggles. And of course, that's why she ate and was so depressed and had all those uh, eating disorders. But this, this whole thing about the throat, and you think about the Rishuddha chakra, right, the throat chakra, self-expression, you know, feeling, right, it's like being strangled, so to speak, by these um, conventions and, um, and rebelling against them. So the pose, um, very interesting too. There's, there's a scene where you see these um, clothing is being delivered in the movie. Um, like she comes for the weekend and all the maids and servants are like wheeling this rack of clothes uh, down the hallway, all the various outfits that she's gonna wear for the next few days. And each one of them is tagged with this, this one belongs to Princess Diana, like here's all her things and this is the daytime and this is the evening and you know, very regimented. Well, they have on the tag P O W, Princess of Wales. I thought, wow, God, isn't that crazy? And she really was like a prisoner of war. Um, so, um, yes, Algol very much connected to death and pain. As a matter of fact, the study of pain in in, in medicine in the field of medicine is called Algolology, based from this um, from the Greek myth. Um, but anyway, um, there are many people that have, um, uh, and Algol can be, you know, people in, in creative, uh, you know, artists, Mick Jagger has, I believe it's the moon conjunct Algol, but uh, the people who have taken things and look how many, all the ballads that he's written and sung over the decades, you know, about pain, like I think of the song Angie, you know, this is pain and sorrow. And so, uh, but achieving great creative great creativity can be had. So I wanna have us turn this, let's turn this narrative around. It's up to us as conscious beings, you know, how do we want this to go? Do we have to be victimized by these old patriarchal interpretations of a demon, a woman that was demonized because she was raped? It's like, wow, like if Harvey Weinstein, you know, when he raped women, those women were demoted or they they got fired or they couldn't work again if they spoke out, you know, like who's getting demonized, right? It's It, it was insane. And so now we're in this epic shift um, in our culture and society around these topics. And I feel that we are really, this uh, a lunar eclipse, even though a lunar eclipse technically only lasts the effects maybe for four months or so, depending on what school of thought you adhere to in that. But yes, typically not as long as a solar. However, since this is the first lunar solar uh, eclipse of the Taurus Scorpio eclipse axis, this is definitely a preview of what is what themes that we will be looking at and transforming in our lives and in the collective for the next year and a half. So definitely bears um, examination and contemplation. Um, so, um, and I, I will say too, there's, um, Mae West, uh, is one of the, uh, one of my favorite actresses from the golden age of Hollywood. Um, you know, the big buxom, um, always had a heart of gold, but very, very much a, a, a change maker for her time in these movies in the 1930s, women were not allowed to be sexual and women couldn't be single and they had to be mothers and the, the sweet little archetype of the homemaker. Well, she just busted all that apart. Um, I saw a documentary about her and, and they said how she, and things that we didn't ever know, she fought for um, black Americans and black actors and actresses. She fought for them to get roles or get more, uh, get speaking roles. You, you would see them in those days, they would only be like maids or butlers. And, and in her you know, boudoir, there's the, the maids with the little aprons. And, but she fought the studio head so they could have speaking lines and they could really participate more instead of just being this person in the background. So, you know, you talk about like this badass, you know, and not taking crap from anybody. I just think that's really cool. Uh, but I do remember that from the documentary. Um, but it, it's all about the empowered female 
defying the patriarchy and doing it her way. And she ended up, uh, you know, she demanded and commanded and got like top dollar. I think she even confronted, it was a Louis B. Mayer or one of those studio heads, like, I'm, I'm, I'm making as much money as you are. I'm, I'm not gonna back off and take anything less, it's certainly with, with parity, with, um, with pay, which of course is you know, still a, a subject that is, uh, we're dealing with in Hollywood even to this day. So that was 80, 90 years ago. And she was just standing up for it. Prominent Algol, Algol conjunct the ascendant. So it was a part of her image and part of what she brought to the world. Um, I will end this conversation by saying that um, Kamala Harris, as, as I said in the previous um, ep episode about Joe and Jill Biden and uh, how this eclipse is falling in his 12th house, and uh, Kamala Harris has, uh, let me see if I should pull up her chart here, just a second. Um, pause, stop, let me see. Oh, share screen, and here it is. Okay, uh, here's Kamala Harris's chart. And as you can see here, she's got Jupiter at 24 Taurus, so the eclipse is three degrees from that Jupiter. Whoa, and it's with Algol there, right? So, whoa, uh, what's happening there behind the scenes? We've got um, uh, the, um, so the eclipse is happening in her 12th house. That's, a, that's the 12th and the sixth axis. That's a tough axis. That's a lot about self-sacrifice, as you can, You've probably been reading the news. She's been coming under a lot of attack in the media about, you know, being um, kind of like given the hard work to do and these diplomatic missions that are almost impossible, like there's just this no win kind of situation. And it's it, something sounding like, oh, were they throwing her under a bus, you know, which would be very 12th housey, you know, feeling like out of sorts. But she's she's a strong one, right? She She's not going to, right? She's not going to take crap from anybody, right? Not with Jupiter conjunct Algol or pretty close to a conjunction. Yeah, she's going to rise to prominence and um, and deal with suffering and deal with uh, these, these topics. And um, with an eclipse there, we might be seeing a change here, uh, certainly. Um, and, and it could be that there's some behind the scenes power brokering going on, making agreements, right? Taurus, Venus ruled agreements, perhaps in secret with power brokers, right? Conjunct Jupiter, um, people in high places, prominence. Um, and so, who, you know, these are, it could be related to Biden. So Biden and Harris, um, you know, definitely have some, you know, there's some um, uh, very uh, uh, powerful, intense, transformative experiences that are going to be happening around our White House. And it's just as simple as that. Um, so uh, definitely um, with eclipse season, it's, you know, prepare for the um, there's a lot of the, the spin cycle, right? On the, the Maytag washer, it's that spin cycle. So um, this is not the time to be coming to any definitive conclusion in between the eclipse cycles. There's just so much is stirred up that it takes a while to really, really sit and sift out and sort out and always give it at least a few days after the solar eclipse, December 4th, to making any kind of decisions because we, we can't see ourselves clearly. You think about, lady die you know um you, you can't you, it's right in front of you but you can't see it you know camilla was right in front of her you know but it's like you know uh it's that kind of thing so it would it's not the kind of time to be making decisions on anything um but certainly i would say with any eclipse we always want to take good care of ourselves with these energies being so intense so stirred up we just past that Mars Uranus opposition, very tough, um, ver you know, bringing up a lot of deep, dark, uh, shocking, um, tumultuous subjects, very, you know, can be very confronting. And so we want to be really kind to ourselves, kind to others, and uh, seeing this as part of a larger transformative process. So not identifying with it, but just using it to, you know, how can I open my heart? How can I move uh, through this in a, in a place that sustains us. Uh, maybe I don't need as much as I thought with the, with the conjunct Algol. You know, we're reinventing our conversation around personal possessions, around our relationships, around the things that are important to us or not important to us. The things we realized that we thought were so, you know, we could not dis, uh, de, uh, detach from. Well, this is an opportunity where 
we we could find ourselves being unattached in a way that might upset us, but hey, you know, like I said, it's always for our best. And so, um, yeah. Oh, well, it's it. there was this one line which I absolutely loved in the Spencer movie. And when um, it's one of her dresser who she really felt like she could confide in, it was a fictional dresser made up, you know, the story illustrating these concepts. Um, Sally Hawkins plays the dresser, did a great job. But um, she knew that she, she could see that she was really under enormous mental duress. And so, um, and she said something about, you know, maybe I need to see a doctor. Diana says, you know, maybe I need to see a doctor. And um, the dresser says to her, you don't need doctors, you need love. I'm like, God, that's just so, oh my goodness. Yeah, you don't need doctors, you need love. Is I feel like I wanna put that on a t-shirt, you know, cause that really is, um, when we get in touch with these deep, deep things and we open our hearts, all of that, the sickness is simply just a reflection of our psyche. So um, anyway, I just wanted to end with that. It was a great movie, uh, great, uh, the, the archetype of what's about to occur with this eclipse and for the Taurus Scorpio eclipse axis uh, and, and with our Venus retrograde. It's not gonna come out of retrograde till early. I mean, it'll come out of retrograde at the end of January and then it'll come out of its shadow. It'll be like early March. So we are gonna be walking with these themes for several months, very, very important. And so um, let's just use these opportunities to, um, they're being given to us. You know, We are these archetypes, these archetypes are us and they're working and playing themselves out through us in our lives. So um, I know we can, it's a great opportunity to make the best of these things and to discover things around ourselves that might've been like eclipse, right? It's right in front of you, but you can't see it. So um, with that, um, yes, I will bid you adieu. Remember on an, an, any eclipse, you do not set intentions and try to do and make things happen. You know, like I know some people do magic on, on full moons, new moons. This is not the kind of, right? Don't do, this is not, right? If the lights are turned off, you're not going to be experimenting. It's not a good plan, right? You take your little high school chemistry set and you start, you know, you got the, your, your eyes are shut and the lights are out and you're trying to like pour, you know, test tube. No, not a good plan, right? <laughs> Can't see what you're doing. So um, yes, prayer, meditation, contemplation, the inward trip, fabulous. So, and yeah, so that's all for now. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you have a wonderful eclipse uh, season and we will be back very soon. We got some cool, we've got SJ Anderson is coming back. Yay, my star brother. We're gonna be probably around uh, the solar eclipse either right before or right after. So that'll be cool. We, we can uh, have a great parlay and, um, and other such things as well. So all for now, thank you so much for listening. This is Irliana Samsara. Oh, and um, if you need an eclipse reading, whether it's for you know the year ahead or um, or just for this eclipse season, please you know just give me a holler, Irliana at starsoundastrology.com or just www.starsoundastrology.com. We'll take care of you. Okay, my dears, much love to you all. Mwah. Bisous, bisous. And uh, this is Irliana Samsara. Star Sound speaks starsoundastrology.com. Thank you all for listening. Bye.